One of these girls was saying how lovely the countryside looks from the air. And here's another group with the same idea. In a field near Hereford, on a warm summer's evening, they're preparing for a flight over the Wye Valley. And we're going with them. Of course, if you're not too keen on heights, there are other leisurely and pleasant ways to explore the Wye Valley. Whichever way you choose, you won't be disappointed. The scenery is quite spectacular. This is the view from Simmons Yacht Rock. And if you're lucky, you may see more than the view. It's here that peregrine falcons nest in the rocky crags above the river. This whole area is rich in wildlife. It's a paradise for nature lovers, photographers, and children. This is a maze at the Jubilee Park near Simmons Yacht. There's also a unique museum of mazes and a shop that sells nothing but puzzles. All this and more can be found at the Jubilee Park, an ideal place for a family outing. 
Further up the river, in the little town of ross on wye you can relax by the waterside. Or explore the twice-weekly market. Today, Ross is a popular centre for touring, particularly during the summer months. It's a place where people go to get away from it all. And here, as elsewhere in Herefordshire, there's a huge variety of activities for the holidaymaker to enjoy. The River Wye is famous as one of Britain's best salmon rivers. It's good for both game and coarse fishing and attracts fishermen of all kinds. The Wye is only one of several lovely rivers which flow through Herefordshire. This is the River Dore. Its surroundings are known as the Golden Valley, and they say it's called Golden because the Normans didn't understand Welsh. When they heard the Welsh word Dur, meaning water, they thought of it as Dore, the French for Golden. Still, it's a nice name, Golden Valley, for a lovely, unspoiled part of the country. If you leave the beaten track, you can seek out some of its fascinating secrets, such as this unusual little church at Kilpeck. It hasn't changed much since it was built in the 12th century, and what a wealth of strange carvings can be found here. All around the corbel, there are more than 70 mysterious figures of beasts, birds, and people. There's even a Celtic fertility symbol, the Earth Mother giving birth. Close by the church is the site of the original medieval village, and above it, you can still find the remains of a very ancient castle originally built by King Offa. There are some good walks around here. The peaceful roads in the Golden Valley are very popular with walkers and cyclists. This party has stopped off to visit Dor Abbey, which was once the home of Cistercian monks. They were a simple order who liked to live in out-of-the-way places where they could follow their quiet, hard-working lives farming the land. Further north, perched high above the valley on Murbach Hill, is a mysterious megalithic tomb known as Arthur's Stone. Legend has it that the famous king once killed a giant on this spot. There are also some splendid views from around here. As you come down the hill on the other side, look out for the village of Bredwardine, with this little church standing among fields by the River Wye. It was here that Francis Kilvert, well known for his diaries, was vicar from 1877 to 1879, and where he died tragically in the prime of life, only five weeks after his marriage. But he left us a vivid account of country life in Victorian times, which was often harsh, cruel and short, especially for the poor. On Christmas Eve, 1878, Kilvert wrote, after breakfast, I went to the Old Western to see the poor Davises and comfort them concerning their child. That child was the shepherd's son, little Davy, whose grave can still be seen in the churchyard close to that of his parents. And the cottage where they all lived is still standing in the fields outside the village. This place hasn't changed much since Kilvert's day. Many of these sights and sounds would have been familiar to him. Yesterday, a new wire bird door was hung at the main door. We have been much troubled by birds in the church lately and have been obliged to close the painted east window to keep out the swallows who were darting in and out with mud and building a nest against the wall just over the altar. 
I was sorry to interfere with them, but it was necessary, for they were scattering mud all over the place. Also well known to Francis Kilvert was the neighbouring border town of Hay on Wye. Nowadays it is famous for its second hand bookshops, the largest number to be found anywhere. Near Hay runs the Offers Dyke footpath, a favourite with walkers. It follows the route of the great earthworks thrown up by the Saxon king Offa. There was, not long since in Mercia, a certain able king, Offa by name, who was feared by all the kings his neighbours and by all the nations round about who also commanded a great dike to be made from sea to sea between the land of the Britons and Mercia. His main reason for building this amazing dike was probably to define his own boundary, but also to keep livestock from straying across the border and, of course, to keep the fierce Britons at bay. Later, the Normans decided that this wasn't good enough and their answer to the problem was to build a number of strong castles along the boundary. Many of these can still be seen, though most have been reduced to a few ruins. One of the best preserved is the castle at Goodrich, and there's enough here to remind us of how it might once have been. From time to time, Goodrich plays host to exciting events which can make its history come alive for today's visitors. But let's escape now from the warring of men to the peace and beauty of nature, which is never far away. In summer, the hedgerows lining the Herefordshire lanes are full of sweet-smelling wild flowers, and these lanes and roads link some of the prettiest villages in the county. In bygone days, when wood was plentiful, people used to build their houses with timber frames, and well-built they were to survive like this down through the centuries. These houses belong to Pembridge, and so does this quaint old marketplace with a 14th century inn next door. One of several where you can refresh yourself on a hot summer's day. The church is interesting too with its strange wooden belfry standing alongside. Just a short distance away is Erdesland, a really lovely village on the River Arrow. There are others too, like Webley, dating back to the 7th century. 
a perfect example of a black and white village. There's an air of mystery about this place. <laughs>